It's Friday, the 15th of July. Good morning, Europe. A very warm welcome to the programme. Let's start by looking at our top stories. Crisis in Italy. The president rejects the resignation of its prime minister, Mario Draghi, after he said his coalition government had collapsed. Firefighters struggle to contain wildfires in Portugal and France as a heat wave spreads across Europe, with temperatures set to soar in the coming days. And around 2,000 Ukrainian truck drivers are stuck at the harbour of Reni as Kyiv tries to kickstart exports of cereals to the world. Mario Draghi's government remains on standby. After offering to step down, President Mattarella refused to accept his resignation. The Italian Prime Minister will have to seek support for a motion of confidence on July 20th. This comes as Draghi survived a vote of confidence at the Senate on Thursday, as a new decree on anti-crisis measures was approved. But former Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte's five-star movement, a key member of the National Unity Government, refused to support the decree. But the former head of the European Central Bank has insisted repeatedly that the government cannot continue without their support. The parties that continue to support Draghi consider Five Star's move a mistake. These are unpredictable, unimaginable consequences provoked by irresponsible choices of a political party which is only damaging the Italian people. Prime Minister Mario Draghi's government rules well. It is good that the government remains. The far right say Draghi should step down. Italy is in a storm, in a delicate economic and social situation. With war and high energy costs, inflation, we cannot have an immovable government. Draghi's broad coalition government, which includes parties of the right, the left and the centre, was designed to help Italy recover from the coronavirus pandemic. However, as the war in Ukraine approaches the five-month mark and as the economic crisis worsens, Italy may once again be left ungoverned. The next few days will be crucial to understand whether or not political parties will be able to stay united. That's uh, at least until next Wednesday when Mario Draghi is expected to brief Parliament and the government will be put through a confidence vote as requested by President Mattarella when he uh, rejected Mario Draghi's decision uh, to resign. Um, but we also know that Mario Draghi was very clear when he said that uh, the government is not, he feels that the government is not united as it used to be and clearly it's pointless to continue uh, leading uh, the current uh, coalition. Uh, the next few days will be crucial to understand also uh, whether instead of Mario Draghi, President Mattarella will be forced to appoint a new prime minister who is going to lead the country and the government until the next general election, which clearly could take place earlier than expected, uh, as early as next autumn. Giorgio Orlandi for Euronews in Rome. Well, another round of second stage voting in the Conservative leadership process took place yesterday, taking away one of the six candidates and leaving the five remaining who are vying to be the next Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Now, at the bottom was Suella Braverman. She was on the right of the party. She only received the backing of 27 fellow MPs. She is now gone and she has thrown her weight and she thinks her supporters behind Liz Truss, who is the Foreign Secretary, who does need it, because on this list today she's currently third. So. The full list, Rishi Sunak, 101 MPs, he is by far the favourite of the Parliamentary Party. Penny Mordaunt coming in second with 83, Liz Trust getting 64, Kemi Badenoch 49 and Tom Tugendhat 32. Now they will all have to face uh, more voting next week but what they've got now by getting past this stage uh, is to the TV debates. The first one will be held uh, tonight, there'll be another on Sunday where they can really show uh, their debating skills not just to MPs but to the wider public. And the MPs will be assessing how the public perceive them and what their reaction is to them. On Monday, there'll then be another round of voting where, again, the bottom candidate will be dropped out. We'll be left with only four for another TV debate on Monday. And then through the course of next week, we'll be whittled down until there are just two candidates left on Thursday. Now, we then go into a round where it is five weeks of the two candidates campaigning for the votes of the around 170,000 paid-up Conservative Party members. Uh, now, some interesting polling has come out 
out on that though. In every scenario, uh, the winner in those heads-to-heads would be Penny Mordaunt. Now she, of course, is second, as I mentioned, with the Parliamentary Party. But against Rishi Sunak, she would beat him decisively. The polling suggests 67% to 28% against Liz Truss as well, 55% to 37%. So she really is a candidate to watch. I think it'll all be down to her TV debates over the course of the weekend, whether she can sustain the kind of momentum she's getting or whether the right of the party who was supporting Suella Braveman now really do get behind Liz Truss to try to take her to that next round. Vincent McAvinney, Euronews, London. The Russian naval blockade against the Ukrainian Black Sea ports has led to a logistical chaos in western Ukraine. Some 2,000 Ukrainian truck drivers are stuck around Rainy, a small harbor on the riverbanks of the Danube, the border river shared by Ukraine and Romania. First of all, I think the guilty country is the aggressor, Russia. If it were not for Russia, there wouldn't have been any problems and we could have unloaded. Everything would have been all right and everyone would have had enough supplies. Rainy is one of the few remaining Ukrainian ports still working, but due to outdated equipment and the overwhelming quantity of cereals arriving to be shipped by barge, it's struggling to cope. The Romanian harbour of Constanza could be part of the solution. With the backing of the European Union, Romania, Ukraine and also Moldova are upgrading alternative export routes for Ukraine's 20 million tons of last year's cereal stocks, while more is coming in from this year's harvest. Each day starts with a challenge. We continue to unblock Ukrainian cereals. Every day we unload thousands of tons of cereals. That's not an easy situation. It's hard work. In the Romanian cereal harbors, the railway infrastructure has been modernized. In Galatz, the works have been completed, but in Constanza it will take until the end of the year. It's a race against time. We need to change over 13 kilometers of railway tracks and 75 turnout tracks. Putin's war on Ukraine is blocking the export of cereals. Here at the Black Sea, cargo ships are queuing up as far as the eye can see. Romania is helping to get grains for the world out of Ukraine, but is there enough time left for shipping the cereals before famine kicks in around the world? Euronews witness the full 10 minutes report from Romania and Ukraine this week on air and online at Euronews and Euronews.com. Lithuania is ready to ease restrictions on the transit of Russian cargo to Kaliningrad. However, as the government explains, this will happen only after the developments of new control rules. The European Commission has previously specified the list of goods that are subject to sanctions in this direction. The Lithuanian opposition sees this move as an unacceptable concession to Moscow. The government urges not to split the EU with transit disputes. The essence of this issue is very simple. Are we a state or are we some territory along the road in which we de facto are only a tavern? That's how this question should be formulated. Our strength is in unity. Russia obviously has a goal to divide the democratic community. We definitely will not help Russia to reach this goal. We have our allies both in NATO and the EU. We have to hear their opinion. Lithuania has slightly different goals. What we have now is a somewhat compromise. Lithuania imposed restrictions on overland transit goods from Russia to Kaliningrad in June, citing new sanctions against Moscow. This week, the European Commission clarified that the transport of certain categories of goods is prohibited only by road. Russia called it an attempted blockade and threatened with a harsh response.